Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today and I'm actually also excited about this event and um, this event series. Um, I really think there should be more events like that because I believe women should be more active in the tech sector. So what I wanna tell you today about is a little bit about Windows Azure. And uh, Windows Azure is Microsoft's cloud platform and by the way, Windows Azure is pronounced in many different ways. Some people say Azure, some people say Azure, some, yeah, you can find different pronunciations for it. So before I begin a little bit about myself, I studied business informatics at the Vienna University of Technology and the University of Vienna. Uh, at that time it was a joint degree program, so I was at both institutions. And after my degree, I worked at a specialized agency of the United Nations. I developed a, a time recording leave planning system for about 900 staff members still being used today. Um, and after that, I married and moved to California uh, and had a daughter. So I was pretty much on maternity break. And when we had a daughter, we thought, yeah, we want to move back to Austria because we want uh, to live in the city with the highest quality of life and <laughs> raise our daughter here. So we moved back to Austria and when I saw that Microsoft has uh, positions for technical evangelists, I got really excited because I thought that uh, evangelist uh, posts were only, at that time I thought uh, this kind of post only exists in the US. So yeah, I got hired as technical evangelist at Microsoft. This is the team, uh, evangelists, I will explain that just now. Um, let me just show you, this is the team that I work with. Um, who can find me on this picture? Here? Yes, I think you were the first one to point. <laughs> so, here's a t-shirt. Let's just ask the second question. Who can find Gerhard here on the picture? He's drinking. The... <laughs> no, he's not yeah, drinking. The rubber ducks. Yeah, the rubber ducks. So another t-shirt. Don't want to spill your coffee. Okay, so I'm technical evangelist for Windows Phone. Uh, as you can see, uh, I go everywhere with my phone, even in the water. And I am part of the group that is called Developer and Platform Evangelism Group, so we do evangelism. That means we try to spread our passion for Microsoft's technology. And as the evangelism group, we work with the latest technologies of Microsoft. So currently our focus is on Windows 8, Windows Phone, and Windows Azure. What we also do is we support, we have customers and partners, and we support them with app development. And we host a couple of events, some of which I will show you later. And we also have lots of contests for developers where you can win cool prizes, like, um, for example, beach towels with our cartoon picture, or Nokia Lumia phones, or even Surface tablets. Oh, and we have a uh, blog. Codefest.t, so all our information, our events, our contests, everything you can find on Codefest.t. Uh, we are also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you name it. Okay, so let's start with the talk. I wanna talk about uh, Windows Azure mobile ser services. Windows Azure is Microsoft's cloud platform. And this is the same cloud we're talking that powers things like Office 365, Bing, Xbox, and Windows Azure offers many different services and one of it is mobile services which you can use if you develop mobile apps. So, why would you use mobile services? You can use mobile services when you are an app developer and yes, we're talking about Windows Phone, Windows 8 naturally apps, but many people don't know that Windows Azure is really open so you can also use it with iOS and Android apps. So let's say for example you want to develop cross-platform, you have some kind of data and you want to 
uh, have the same data on different platforms, you would uh, you can go with a solution having your data stored in the cloud with Windows Azure Mobile Services. And uh, mobile services also offer you to build in certain features that app developers could probably use. And such features could be user authentication, if your app needs user authentication, if your apps needs notification, and of course, if you have a backend uh, need for your app. And we have also seen that nowadays we are shifting the paradigm from the classical, traditional, large uh, software development suites like Office to little apps that are focused on a specific foc uh, so focus on a specific purpose, and everything goes much faster. And Windows Azure mobile services help you to get up and running really fast. We will actually see it in a demo today. Okay. So I told you Windows Azure Mobile Services has a couple of services. What kind of services are we talking about? First of all, we have data. You have 20 MB free uh, SQL Server database that comes with it. Of course, you can buy more if you need more for your app. And you have the server logic with it too if you want to intercept, uh, insert, update, delete calls. You have a service to add user authentication to your app and notification. Uh, notification will show differently depending on which platform you use. So for Windows 8 or Windows Phone, it could be a lifestyle update. It could be a toast notification, which is the notification at, at the top of the screen. You have a scheduler where you can schedule periodic tasks to run. You have logging and diagnostic tools. And of course, you can scale out and scale up as you see your needs are growing. So yeah, as I said, you have a, a SQL database that comes with your mobile services. And you can use one database for many apps. Each app will have its own schema. That was a bit fast. And of course, you can use a variety of tools to access your data on Windows Azure. And you also have the server logic that you can build in into the insert, delete, update, uh, read scripts. You have different querying options. You have a dynamic schema, which means that in your app, uh, if the entity that corresponds to your table, uh, if you add properties to that entity, it will, with a dynamic schema, it will automatically create the columns on your Windows Azure mobile service table. User authentication means you can provide user authentication to your users using Microsoft, Twitter, Google, uh, and Yahoo account. Sorry, Facebook, Facebook account. Um, it's pretty useful because you don't have to worry about keeping the password secure. You just use the service and build it into your app. And you can add, uh, you can set the permissions on table level, but if you actually work with the scripts, you can even set, a, set the permissions, access permissions to by user ID. Uh, this is an example how push notifications would work, for example, on a Windows 8 client. You have the Windows 8 client, which gets from this notification platform a channel URI and sends it to the mobile services, which then sends it with the authentication to the Windows push notification service. And that sends it to this notification client platform, and this is responsible to show the to show this notification in the appropriate form. So if it's a raw notification, you, it would be shown, uh, it would be handled in your app. If it's a lifetime update, you would see it on your lifetime. If it's a toast notification, you see the UI for a toast notification. And if you have questions, just let me know. So yeah, I mentioned that already. Let's start with the demo now. So what I'm going to show you is I have a simple project here. Getting started with data. And by the way, you can all try this yourself. 
I have this from the Windows Azure documentation website. It's a simple sample so you can see how to build a mobile service backend into your app. And you can recreate this at home too. You just download the sample. So here we have a phone app. Let's just quickly run to see what it does. And by the way, I'm developing in Visual Studio. Has any one of you developed in Visual Studio before? Okay, so if you would develop a Windows Phone app, you also have the emulator with it. And it's actually pretty cool because you can simulate things uh, like, so let me just move that a little bit. You can simulate things like accelerometer if you need this in your development location and so on. So this is just a simple to-do list and I can add items in my to-do list. Let's just enter a couple, item two. And I can click them and if I click them, it means they're complete and they're not shown anymore. Just to show you right now, this is stored locally. I will show it to you in a code, but just so you can see, if I start it up again, I don't have the data anymore. So, here we have our project, and here in the Solution Explorer, you can see uh, the files that come in this project. And basically, I have two, the relevant files here are this app XAML and this main page XAML. The app XAML has code that is relevant for the whole app, like what happens when the app starts, what happens when the app closes. And the main page is our one page. Uh, in this app, we only have one page. So let's go to the main page XAML code behind file. And here we can see we have a collection class. In this case, it's an observable collection. We bind it to our uh, control in the UI so that all the items that are in this collection will be shown on the UI. We call it items, and my collection has items of the class to do item which is a class that we defined above here. And this class basically just has three properties, ID, text, and complete. A string for a text and a Boolean for uh, complete that represents our checkbox. Then I have three methods. I have a refresh, where I basically just hook up my UI control that shows the items with my collection. I have an update met method where I remove the item when it's clicked, when the button for, when the checkbox is clicked. And I have an insert method, so here. In the insert method, I just add the to-do item. So like, if I click on save, I create a new to-do item with a text from the UI, and I call the insert method with my to-do item. So basically, this is all working locally. So what we want to do is we want to create a mobile service and we want this data to go in the cloud and save it and retrieve it from there. So let's go to windowsazure.com and I'm going to do this live now. So I hope everything's okay with the network. Um, I'm here in manage.windowsazure.com. I already signed up. And then you can go to manage.windowsazure.com to be in your portal. This is basically, if you want to know how Windows Azure looks like, this is how it looks like. So we want to create a mobile service now. I click on new. And so here I have mobile service and click on create. And now I can specify a URL how I can access my mobile service. So let's call it to do three. I don't know how many I've used. So, and I already have, uh, I already used up my 20 MB SQL database. So I'm using my existing database. You would obviously create a new database. And here I can uh, select in which data center my 
data will be hosted. So obviously I'm taking the one that is closest to me, which would be North Europe. And then I click on next. And here, since I already created, I need my password. And I have so many password, I don't remember them. So let's see. So now you can see here my mobile service is being created. It takes a couple of minutes, depending how fast the network is. By the way, I went to Dublin and visited one of the uh, Windows Azure data center, and I must say it was the most exciting thing I've seen at my time at Microsoft so far, really cool. If you ever get the chance to visit a data center, I think any data center, that's an exciting thing to see. Okay, so the service is still being created. Let's see, by the time, oh, okay, so now it's ready. So now we can go into that service. We are in our dashboard. And when you have, the, uh, when you have created, you can even see here links to, obviously we are working on a Windows phone, but if you're working on Android, iOS, you can click on the corresponding tab and it gives you of, of instructions how you get started, how you can build that mobile service into your app now. So we are going now to data and we don't have any tables, so we create a table and we call it to do item and click yes. Now our table is being created. Okay. And if we look into that table, it obviously doesn't have any data yet, but if we look at column, we can see it already came with some predefined columns here. And now we want to add our mobile service to our app. So first of all, what we need is we need a reference to our mobile service in the app. So we go back to our project, and this time we go to the app XAML. And if you start with this sample, you already have the code here. You just need to uncomment it. So I hear Okay, there's one more thing that I forgot to mention. We need the library for Windows Azure Mobile Services, which I already did before because I didn't know how long it would take to download. But if you don't have it, you right click on reference, go to manage NuGet packages, which is the package manager where you can download additional libraries for your project. And in the search field, you just write Windows Azure Mobile Services. And as you can see, I have a green tick mark here because I already installed it, but if I hadn't installed it, I would see a button and just click on install. So in this case, I already installed it, and now I need the reference in that project. So I just add Windows Azure Mobile Services. And now I need these two values here. I need the app URL and app key. Where do I get this from? I go to my dashboard of my mobile service and I can see here my mobile service URL. I copy that and paste it in here. And then I go to manage keys down here and here I have my application key which I can also copy and just paste in here. Okay, so we have our reference mobile service which is available anywhere in our project. And next we go to our main page, XAML. And now, first of all, we wanna remove this local collection because we wanna store it in the cloud now. So we need a reference to our table. So I uncomment these two and I need a couple of namespaces here. So add 
mobile services. So what I have here first is a collection, a mobile service collection, which will have all my uh, to-do items that I read from Windows Azure, and this I can bind to my UI control, and I have a class, mobile service class, which I basically get by the mobile service reference with the get table uh, method. It returns me my table. So I have a reference to that. And there's another thing that we need to do up here in our entity class. And I need a couple of more namespaces. So what this does, it declares that this property of this class corresponds to that column name on Windows Azure. In this case, we have the same column name. Next thing, what we do is we update our insert, update, and refresh items. So they actually read and write from the table from Windows Azure instead of the local collection. So let's start with the refresh method. And we do this, taking this method. Basically, I'm just reading, so I'm just reading from my table reference and with the two collection async, I convert uh, what I get into a collection and have this into my mobile service collection and then I hook it up to, the, I, to my UI control again. And when I go to the insert method, I just call this insert async method on my table and it automatically stores my to-do item into the table on Windows Azure. Same for the remove method. I have this method called update async. And this will update my item in the Windows Azure table. And that's pretty much it. So let's run it and let's cross our fingers that I didn't forget anything. So item on Azure. And item two. So of course, this doesn't prove anything now that it's really on Azure. I closed it and I will run it again. It should still be there. Here it is. And if we update it, we remove it. And just to prove it's really, really there, we go back to our management portal into our table. And we see here our two items. One was checked, one wasn't checked. So my data is stored in the cloud now. Okay, so that was my demo. You could see it's, it was pretty fast that I added, that I changed from local data to data in the cloud. And there are actually other cool stuff like try out user authentication notifications. It's also, also simple and fast to hook up into your project. So if you're interested in trying this out, you can find information about developing Windows Phone, Windows 8 on dev.windows.com or dev.windowsphone.com. Every, all information about Windows Azure is on windowsazure.com. And uh, I think Gerhard had mentioned it before, we have the Microsoft Virtual Academy where we have online training for different things that you can, like how to develop Windows Phone apps, Windows Store, but also how to develop games. And it's really, there's loads of uh, content material available for you. So yeah, I think Gerhard had mentioned it to you. If you want to develop phone or Windows 8 apps, you also need accounts for the corresponding stores. And you get the accounts also through DreamSpark or through BizSpark or through MSDN. And if you don't have any of these, you can contact us. We have some tokens for free events. 
Now to the upcoming events. I mentioned we also have a couple of events. We actually have a hackathon for women coming up under the title Apps and Games. We will do two tracks, app development and game development for beginners. Um, I mean, for developers who have never developed games or for the Windows platform. It's coming up in 24th and 25th May, Saturday, Sunday. So if you're interested, the, all information will be posted on codefast.at in the coming month. And we also have a couple of other uh, events. We have hackathons, other hackathons as well. One is coming up right now in March. Uh, we have the Microsoft Day, which is our largest event of the year. And um, for startups, we have a mobile app acceleration camp so they can get grants by applying to the app campus. A lot of money waiting here. We will host a Unity workshop for game development. The Women's Hackathon I mentioned, and we are going on tour through Austria as well. So all information on CodeFest.at. And of course, you can also, always also contact me, Rina A with a double A at the end at Microsoft.com. So thank you for listening, and I hope it was interesting for you.